Hey, I'm Greg Fitzsimmons. Love my kids. But they get to an age where they think they're cooler than you. And you just want to look at them and go, hey, you don't know me, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> From Wondery, I'm Chris Garcia. I'm Megan Gailey. And I'm Kurt Brownoller. And this is I Love My Kid, But... Welcome, folks, to I Love My Kid, but the parenting show that will not help you in any way, shape, or form. We have no help to give. Moral support. It's yeah. moral support. Maybe yeah. we'll empathize yeah. with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll root for you. Some of the reviews yeah. say we are helping them. Okay, you great. You know what? I actually, I got um, recognized. Rec- recognized? Recognized? Yeah, go Someone with recognize. You Niles from Frasier. Is that what happened? <laughs> yes. It would be great if he always was like, I got recognized again. <laughs> I got recognized um, from the podcast in the most I love my kid, but place of all time. 9 a.m. Saturday swim lesson. Yeah. Oh, nice. Classic. So what's up, Katie? I'm <laughs> so thrilled to get to be in a bathing suit with you. Um, isn't that funny? We're just like in bathing suits with other parents. Like, hello, man. I don't know. Um, but she said, thank you. Oh, oh that's So nice. I guess we are helping. That's amazing. We're, we're not providing um, advice or uh-huh. data. We're not Emily Oster. No, we have no, we've got nothing in in, the, in there's the bucket's empty. Yeah. If you want an advice bucket, we do not have it. But we're providing something. Exactly. We have a story bucket for you maybe yeah. if you need that. Laps. Also, Conrad taking swim lessons at 1, he's 14 months. Um yeah, I started him in swim lessons when he was like 6 months. Wow. What happens in that? It's just no, here you go. It's, you, it's just like you it, dunk no, them? it's not the throw one. It's not yeah. like that tick. People are like, t- "Throw man." I'm like, no, I wouldn't tell you if I did. Um, I it's, it's. I think it's mostly to get them comfortable in the water. Right. So it's oh, like yeah. a mommy and or a parent and me, okay. and I'm holding him, and we're doing puppies and kitties, puppies and kitties, and that's like a doggy paddle. <laughs> and then you put him on the side of the wall, and you say, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall, and he fall. He, he doesn't fall Jumps into in the, the pool. I bring Not him into either. the. Right. So it's. It, it. We were going through a bit of um. A regression with bath time. And by oh. regression, I mean standing up and screaming and spinning around and trying to kill himself in the bathtub. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think it's actually- Familiar. I think it's helping with bath time. He's oh, like, that's great. Oh, okay. This is like a little pool. Right. Oh, fun. Yeah. And I, I, I can open my eyes underneath it. Yeah. I get it. Uh, we're very excited today because we have the wonderful and very funny Greg Fitzsimmons on the show. Ooh. And also, we're going to be talking about rage. (laughs) Seems like a perfect combination. (laughs) And how being parents has turned us into monsters. I'm so excited to have Greg on the podcast. I've been a fan for a long time. When I was first starting comedy in San Francisco, a lot of the the young comics would go to the punchline on Tuesday to watch whatever headliner was going to be there. Uh And I remember the first time I saw Fitzsimmons, there was like... 10 com- which is like a lot more than yeah. normal and, yeah. he, and people were there just to watch him and I right away knew why he's just he is so funny he's I so would, funny I would love to hear him talk about anything and yeah. so I'm excited to talk to him about parenthood that would awesome. be too and of course we like to start every show with a little thing we call circle time and that is where we tell you a story from our parenting lives uh, just so you feel less alone. And I believe today, Chris, you have our, you're leading us in mm-hmm. circle time. I am leading the circle. You're the only one with rage. <laughs> yeah, I'm the only one. <laughs> I'm clear. <laughs> um, I should start with a disclaimer. Well, I am not proud of this. Uh-huh. Let's just say it was just one of those moments where rage really got me. I don't know if this has happened to y'all or anyone listening out there, but I used to be very chill. I was a chill person. I would I would identify you as a chill person. Right? Yeah. My, yeah. my biggest stress was like, oh, did I buy a ticket to Burning Man in time? Oh, <laughs> like, I, I was just chill. Now I am filled with rage. <laughs> <laughs> now I've got rage again. <laughs> it would be good for you, Megan. You, no, it would be good for you. You um, could use not. a week on the playa, actually. I'm I, that would be good for you. trying to restore abortion rights. <laughs> I don't have time to go to Burning Man! <laughs> 
So it was one of those days that was like, it, it was a good day. It was a little tough. We went to my mom's house. She lives in South LA. She's about 45 minutes, an hour south of where we live. We were there all day. Sunny never naps while there because I don't know if you've ever been to a Latino apartment building, but it is the <laughs> loudest place on earth. There's uh, every TV in every room in every complex and every place is on full blast. It's like that Flaming Lips album, Zyrica, where you play all the oh, all the yes. CDs at the in same four, time. In the four corners <laughs> yeah. of the room. It's like that there's chihuahuas there's birds of <laughs> tropical descent and uh and my mom has this way of whispering called yelling and she sunny just never naps well and so she's we're driving home it's been a long day she's starting to get very fussy in the car so i'm like oh do you want a bar and she's like yeah and it's i don't know if this has happened to you but you're like oh there's like a fruit bar in, in the passenger seat and then you pick it up and it's empty it's yeah. just the uh, wrapper and it's I'm like, like but it's per- been sitting there perfectly <laughs> yeah, in the shape yeah. of having a bar inside yeah. of it. It's just maintained its ghost of an actual food yeah. item. It's yeah. just the husk and then you grab it and you're like, oh, no. no. And then I'm like, do you want to listen to Bluey? And she's like, yeah. And she didn't want to listen to it. She wanted to watch it, but I didn't want to look it up on my phone because I was on the freeway. And so she starts screaming because she wants to see Bluey. I'm on the 110 freeway, which is the most dangerous freeway. It, it's it's- Insane. It's, if for people who don't live in Los Angeles, this freeway was created in nineteen. I think it's the first in eight, one. It's 18, the first twenty-two. First, first freeway ever. It is still the size of like a horse and carriage, <laughs> yeah. and it's made for one horse per lane. And there are no exit or enter ramps. No. You are at a stop sign, and then you need to go. <laughs> yeah, and you have be to, on the highway. You have to be at, and everyone's going sixty-five. So you have to go from a standstill to sixty-five instantaneously. It is my, so dangerous. My mom refuses. Like yeah. she yeah. can't be a passenger. Once I was like, "Can you run me an errand?" She was like, "You have to navigate me away <laughs> from that place." Like it is. It's really scary. Yeah. It's kryptonite. It's like NASCAR for people that don't drive with insurance. <laughs> 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 It's sketchy. And so we're driving, uh, and uh, I see a... I'm just trying to get home, I'm, and I've reached, uh, like, a. am just like, it's maddening what's going on right now, and then all of a sudden I see a sea of brake lights ahead of me, uh, and I'm like, okay, and I'm going to slow right into this to, you know, let the person behind me know that I'm a dad, and I yeah. break early in this situation, and uh, I start slowing down, and the car behind me is not slowing down at all. They are going full speed. And I was on the far right lane. I pull off uh, kind of onto the shoulder or whatever it's called. And this car slams on its brakes and almost hits the car right in front of me. Oh, my God. So we, he passed you. He passed oh, if me. If you hadn't done that, he would have hit you. He would have killed us. Oh he would have sandwiched God. us. And so I pull over and he goes, Arr! he slams on his brakes. And I'm like, what the f- what the fuck, buddy? Like, I'm just looking at him all mad. Yeah. And this guy really doesn't care. He's got one of those. He's probably texting. He's probably texting. He's got, is it a Ravel? What's the truck, the mm. new truck that's like an E? Rivian. A Rivian. I always get it wrong. Yeah. Oh, it's those a are Rivian. expensive and it had a wait list. So that guy's got nothing going on in I'm his life. I'm at this guy. This guy's not <laughs> looking. And I'm like, screaming isn't enough. I am so mad right now. I roll down my window and I take a LaCroix that I had in the console. <laughs> not not an empty no. LaCroix. This is one no. of those LaCroix that you take a sip and you just leave it there for days. It was yeah. just hot LaCroix. Hot LaCroix. Eh. No bubbles. No bubbles. Eh. This is just seen, water. Just water. There's water and chemicals. Key <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> lime water. And I take this and I just chuck <gasps> it. I chuck it at his fucking car. Like I'm Patrick Mahomes, oh. like trying to be save the Super Bowl. I just th- he's a football player, Kurt. Okay, thank uh, you. <laughs> yeah. And I just throw this thing. I just hear this thud, and this guy just looks at me, and I'm like, <laughs> I have like the yeah. the mischief, yeah. and, oh. and, and I just like a thousand Beetlejuices in my face. I'm like, ah! <laughs> and then this guy is so he's like, huh? And he just pulls off and drives away. He pulls off in front of me, and he just pu- gets off the freeway because what I did was so crazy. <laughs> Wow. And I felt so great for one second <laughs> and then so bad for my di- – like, Sunny didn't really – she was just confused and she was yeah. already – but I was like, oh, my God, I hope she doesn't catch this. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, no, is this the is this the ghost of my dad being like, hey, good job, man. I got you. I still got you, man. I still got you. That's what you do. 
Just punch a guy with a can, okay? <laughs> if you have to, if it comes down to it. And it's just, it feels so bad. But I just wanted to get home. Yes. Yeah. This guy almost killed us. Yeah. Yelling wasn't enough. No. I had to bring a LaCroix into this. When it pops off and that rage comes out, it feels so good for the moment of it and one second after and then immediately feels awful. Ugh. The other day, I was trying to get the kids out of the door to go somewhere and they just were like fucking and fucking around fucking around fucking around and I finally I yelled and uh, Olive just goes well this is it here it is <laughs> and I and I go <laughs> I immediately called myself immediately felt bad for you and I was like what she goes mom leaves and you go crazy <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and, then I, and then I was like, I she just broke the tension so much I started laughing and I was like, she's a six year old. Do you know yeah. what I mean? So she said, my, and then I was like, fine, you can do what you're about. And I was like, that's the wrong thing to <laughs> but say. Then you're like, is that the pattern? Is that what she like thinks of you? I I like I think. Or do you think she was? I think she you? also <laughs> knows what will make me like just stop and be like, yeah, yeah, let yeah. her do what she wanted to do. Yeah. I was like, see, not crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mom's not here and I'm not crazy. <laughs> the car thing is scary too, because yes. it's like you almost had best case scenario that he was like, oh, you're crazy. I'm yes, leaving. I'm leaving. Yeah. Because it's like, listen, we've seen beef. Um, yeah. It's like, I, I, you see news stories all the time. Like it's like road rage leads to Scary no, things. I'm so and scared. I'm scared. No, you don't. Uh, but yeah. it's like, you don't know what I'm going through. You yeah. know, like, I am I have it worse than you right now. Can you just not try and kill us? But they can't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they can't. They can't. They, they can't, can't even do that. Well, if you guys are in the car, well, we hope that this is the one thing that goes good <laughs> in your day. Back. Listening to us. First off, throwing. wash your back. <laughs> Drive like it's Mad Max out there. That's our advice. Remember, never take advice from us. <laughs> uh, we're very excited. We'll be right back uh, with the wonderful Greg Fitzsimmons. All right, you heard our today's guest at the top of the show. Please welcome a uh, very funny comedian and Emmy Award winning writer, also the father of Four times? two kids, what? Owen and JoJo. Please welcome to the show, Greg Fitzsimmons. Oh, this is an honor. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. You the plants been... <laughs> uh, are real, by yep. the way. Oh, yeah. We constantly water them when we're uh, not doing the podcast. <laughs> it's, you're like <laughs> we have to farming podcast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got the three stages of parenting here. You got yeah. the newborn, you got the toddler, but not quite elementary. What, what, what grades are they in? Uh, Kindergarten. She, well, my, my daughter's going into first. And then. My, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah Younger's so. in three. And then Chris is two and a half. Two and a half. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah? And then how old are your kids? Mine are, tw my son's 22. 22? And my daughter's 20. He just graduated college. He majored in communications. Mm -hmm. Thank God he can really talk to you. Oh, that's <laughs> why. Yeah. Yeah. And he can also rely on me for income for the rest yeah, of the Yeah, yeah. And so, uh, so if, as a parent, and I wonder now, that's 22 and 20, is... Because we were talking about rage, and like I think young children can can incite a level of rage that we were. I think Chris and I, and Megan is uh, a, a saint, and she has no, no rage. No, that's She's not what I said. Better. I said I had so much rage before <laughs> that once I had a kid, I was already at the ceiling. Yeah, like I was already at the top of the rage, and so I was like, oh, I have to go down a little bit. And, uh -huh. I, and I think it's less our children bringing out the rage in us, but the outside world yes. not treating us like we are special because we have a child with us. <laughs> oh no, being, I, I flew yesterday and there was a screaming child and some guy next to me kept looking at me and rolling his eyes. I go, don't roll to me. Don't fucking roll to me. What are you on? Your way to a bachelor party? You yeah. got you got some magic mushrooms in your pocket and you can't wait to play blackjack? <laughs> this motherfucker was up at 4 a.m. feeding this kid, changing yeah. this kid, packing an extra bag. That kid can cry all he wants. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know. I always just feel bad for the parent. I'm just like, yeah, I've been there. Right. I've been there. I got your back. Ugh. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I feel like bringing a tape recorder in my bag with the screaming baby on it. <laughs> and if I don't like my passenger next to me. Just kicking it off. I was once uh, on a plane uh, going to D.C. and I was about to do shows. And uh, there was a 
dude with a cat in a bag in front of me. <laughs> and I just kept looking over and I would hear like, I kept hearing something. And then I just saw him like, oh, zip it open. And then like a cat head <laughs> popped out and he like fed the cat. And then the cat went back down. But then right before we landed, the cat started really meowing. I think it was freaking out. So we took it out of the bag and the cat immediately took a shit. <laughs> <laughs> and then it rolled because we were like, because you know how when you're landing and then sometimes it goes yeah. and you take out like go up again. And so then the cat shit just rolled and hit me. No. And I was just like, how did a cat shit on me from a bag <laughs> in front of me? It was like amazing while we're landing. Wow. That's yeah. pretty sweet. At your ages, your kids are, are you, what is, is it friend? Is there friendship there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, very much so. Like my daughter. Daughter's new thing is she's 20, but she's got a fake ID, yes. and we go to. She likes to shoot bar pool. <laughs> oh, nice! So we go to dive bars on the west side. That sounds oh, so fun. fun. It's so fun because we walk in, and I'm a really good pool player. I grew up with the table in my basement, and then uh -huh. my whole life I've just hung out at bars, yeah. shooting pool. Yeah. And I won a nine ball tournament in New York City one year. <gasps> wow. Yeah. So we go into these bars, and I've taught her, so she's not bad. And so we walk into these bars, and then a lot of them know us now, but when we go to a new bar, we'll start playing, and they kind of roll their eyes like, all right, look at this bald guy and, yeah. and his- Girlfriend. And they, that's what happens. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happens is we start kicking their asses, and by the third opponents, I'll, I'll say something like, yeah, my daughter, and they go, oh, my God, thank God you said that. <laughs> We've all been wondering what the hell you guys are doing yeah. together. I mean, that's one of the most fun L.A. games. It's yeah. like wife, daughter, granddaughter. You're right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we have we have fun doing that. And then me and my son, he's a jock. So we play a lot of uh, we played beach volleyball together yesterday with, with his. He brings his friends. I bring my friends and we all play. And then we play, uh, you know, paddle tennis down oh, at Venice fun. Beach. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. We play paddle tennis a lot. One on one basketball. And we just jock it up together. <laughs> watch sports. That's oh, that's awesome. great. Yeah. Oh, that, I, that's like it's such a it's such a cool future to envision yeah you know what I mean yeah. like right now I can kind of see it with my six year old we can sometimes have like some chats yeah. that are like oh this is like really cool and I tried to and I forgot that the three year old's not at the six year old level <laughs> and so I was talking to him and he was trying to kill something and I was like <laughs> you know everything's alive Gus and he was just like he was like sign for a second he's like even the sun. And I was like, <laughs> you know what? Everything that's, that you are was made inside the heart of a star, like the sun. So you, and he's like, what? And I was like, yeah, you, you're made of stardust, Gus. And there was a beat, and then he goes, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and I just started laughing so hard. And I was like, yeah, we'll, we'll wait a little bit for this information for you. You are made of stardust. <laughs> I want to give you this because this is the, uh, the struggle wand. This was, we found in a dumpster. Um, and uh, when you hold it, you can tell us anything you've been struggling with recently for parenting. Oh. Um, uh, any, any issues you've been struggling with or even parenting or just in life, really. The thing I'm struggling with with my kids is that they're at the age where they're adults, mm -hmm. but I try to treat them more. It, it, there's a transition from being a parent of a child where you are completely responsible for their survival, where you do have to think for them. They have no prefrontal cortex yeah. <laughs> and they and you have to really save them from themselves. And then they get to this age, they don't want any help at all till it's the night before they're going to Europe and they don't have the lecture <laughs> And then you have to help them. But I think the hard thing is letting them do it themselves without saving them and letting them fall. Mm. Yeah. And I'm not good at that. Yeah. Uh, my parents were great at it. <laughs> yes. They did. They, they got a jump start on it, actually. Is that around six or seven. So bad at it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They really wanted me to fall a lot at six or seven. A lot of like today they talk about their everybody's a helicopter parent. My parents were like blimp parents. <laughs> they were like satellite parents. They were the stars. I wasn't the dust. They were They were ahead of their time. Yes. Because LA's coming back to that. LA is oh, trying really? to come back oh, to that. Oh yeah. We've been at we've been at parties and it's real hands off. Free range kids. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody wants a free range kid now. Um, so yeah, I would say that's the thing I'm struggling with is letting them fail and realizing that. I'm empowering them to figure it out on their own. I can't, you know, my daughter, the car broke down and she called me. 
Yeah. And I go, Jojo, look in your wallet. You got a AAA card. Yeah. Just use it. Just call that number. Yeah. That just AAA call, is your dad now. Just yeah. call that random <laughs> right. man to come and meet you on the <laughs> side of the road. <laughs> Greg, we were talking at the top of the show about rage and just gr- just rage growing as a parent. Like someone parked in our driveway recently. What? And yeah, it was just parked like in – I couldn't get out of the driveway. I couldn't what? pull out because someone had blocked it. And I had walked into the street and just started going, white Lexus! <laughs> Whose white Lexus is this? And my wife's like, who the fuck are you? Michael Douglas and falling down? I just became white so Lexus. upset. And then he had a personalized plate, oh which was God. it was like Mr. Something. It was Mr. Blank, we'll say. And then I went inside and I wrote a note on an index card on a Sharpie. And I said, hey, Mr. Blank, you're going to be Mr. Toad the fuck away if you do this again. And I was like, you cannot put this in this guy's car. I'm never been like this before yeah. and something yeah. about parenthood yeah. has brought rage upon me yeah. for you has it changed have you gotten less rageful or more angry well I can just remember with my kids like getting angry in a way that I didn't used to mm-hmm. like I remember my daughter one time we were at a pool uh, all my relatives were there and so it was time to get out of the pool and I had already swam got out and you know laid on one side mm-hmm. flipped over laid on bathing suit Nice and dry, yeah. right out of the dryer, warm. <laughs> and now my daughter won't get out of the pool, but it's time to go. Yeah. And so I call her over, and she swims away from me. And all the relatives, who are judging you, yeah. Yeah. start to elbow <laughs> each other. And I walk around to the other side of the pool, and I was like, come on, Jojo, really, come on, let's go. Swims away from me again. Now the cameras are coming out. Now, <laughs> now they're filming. And it's Jojo, Jojo, serious, Jojo, I'm serious, get out of and so I had to do it. I had to jump in the pool, get my bit. Now it's like sun's going down. It's cold. I get her. And then she gets out of the pool and I don't hand her the towel. And we have to walk two blocks to get to the car. She's in her bathing suit. She's about nine or eight. And she's trembling, blue lips and trembling. And we walk to the car and then we get to the car and I open up the door and I hand her the towel and she takes her hand. And she pushes it back at me and oh. gets in the car. And that's when I went, oh, I'm fucked. <laughs> I got one of those. Yeah. It, and, and then we get home. We get home. And I send her to her room. She goes in her room. And then I'm curious what she's doing in there. So I walk around the house and I look in her window. <laughs> oh, my God. And she has put in a CD of Hawaiian music and put on a lay. And she was hula dancing. Oh. In her bathing suit. And I called my wife and I said, I'm going to book a lot of road work this year. Because <laughs> this is the demon child. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, so, Greg, we do this thing called Time Out, where yeah. uh, we take one thing about parenting and we put it in Time Out. And each of us goes, uh, we'll all go, and then you'll go last. Good. Um, who <laughs> wants to Who wants to Time Out first? Um, I'd like to put intrusive thoughts on Time Out. We were talking about earlier about rage and, and being chill before parenthood came and all this stuff. But, like, sometimes I'll just get these crazy thoughts. Like, yeah. yesterday we were driving home from this nice vacation uh, in Ojai. Uh, we were sitting by the pool all day. It was just a nice day with me and Sonny and Val and driving back and driving over these about to drive over railroad tracks. And I was like, the the guardrail hasn't come down. And I'm just like envisioning a train yes. hitting us yeah. and then or me turning into a train that's not there. Yeah. And this, this sort of thing happens out of the blue ever since becoming a parent, and it's so scary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know it's like a culmination of anxiety or not, you know, subconsciously this stuff happens, but, oh, it's like yeah, it's it like so you're, It's because there's like a part of your heart that now just walks around outside, and so now all of a sudden you're just going to imagine, and that's, I, I agree, like, that whole helicopter parenting thing, too, I've been trying to pull back and not, like, try and protect Olive from things that are happening, even though they're, like, especially social things that seem to be, like, hurtful are always, like, so hard. But it's like, ah, no, it's just to go through that. and Or, like, the realization that life life is, like, 
suffering <laughs> and that your child is just going to have to suffer and you can't do anything about it is like, it's really, it drives me crazy. Yeah, right? but the real suffering is when they're 30 <laughs> and they can't call AAA and they, <laughs> you know, and they don't know how to self-soothe. So, you know, yeah, let them fail. The earlier, the better. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, you look at all these guys and women that over the years have become powerful and, you know, CEOs, but they grew up dirt poor with one parent yeah. and they just, just kind of figured it out. Just a stick to fight they people with. They had a with. stick. Yeah. yeah. That was their dad. Uh, Megan? Mine's gonna, my timeout's gonna sound so basic after your intrusive thoughts. I just want to put laundry in a timeout. I love it. I'm put it in there. I'm drowning. You, we mm. just non-stop. It's non-fucking stop and, laundry. And like, we're in that stage where he's just like wiping his face on, like mm -hmm. if I'm trying yeah. to wipe his nose, he's like, I want it! Boogers, you know, you know, you're just like, why do you need boogers on your face? Yeah. That's disgusting. Right. And so instead of letting me wipe his face, he just wipes it. And I'm like, Conrad, this is cashmere. You know, like, yeah. you don't have some trash mom. Yeah. I've got nice shit. Yeah. I'm going to put in time out. Um, summer colds. <sighs> uh, just from summer camp. Like today, I'm when I leave here, I'm going to go camping for uh, like eight hours. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to go sleep at, at, in a tent and then go surfing in the morning. And I was so excited about it because I got like, it's all clear. And then we woke up this morning and Gus had a cold. And I was just like, there it is. Am yeah. I, is this, am I, do I not get to go? And so I had to like lay myself at the altar just being like, I cannot go. If, yeah. this can t if he can't go to school, I will not go. But I'm also going to give him Motrin right now and send him to school. Yeah. So fingers crossed, Gus comes home oh. safe. I heard a kid cough in like Conrad's class. Like he's in a specific class and I heard this other kid cough and I looked at him, I go, did you give that to my kid? Like I asked yeah. a one year old. <laughs> I was like, Juan, did you fuck up my week? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Greg? Um, I think gearing it more towards my kid's age, mm -hmm. I'd like to put a time out on people or my kids in general expecting me to get them an internship <laughs> with a friend of mine. Like, I'm going to call you up and go, hey, my son is a communication man. Do you mind if he comes into, uh, what is this, I love my kid butt? Can he sit in the corner and get paid 18 bucks no. an hour? Would that be cool? And is that is that like a all their friends? I mean, like, we live in a town where they probably went to high school with kids whose, like, parents yeah. run Sony. Right. And so they're like, yeah, I want to go work on the new Marvel movie. I've had so many of my son's friends approach me. I want to I want to get into comedy. Oh no. Could you be more vague? <laughs> like, well, what do you want to do? Improv, stand up, right? I don't know. I just like comedy. Oh, do you? I like joy. Can you help me but with I, joy? I can't get any of that. Yeah. And so I've had to, uh, I've had to, I have, I have nieces and nephews yeah. that are looking, they all want to move to Hollywood and they all want to get into comedy. <laughs> like that's a thing now. That was not a thing when I started. No. There was no living to be made being funny. There was no. like a handful of people that yeah. did it. And now there's so many yeah. and there's no barrier for entry. I think that, we need to bring, like, w back to the days of the court jester. That was when there was stakes <laughs> with comedy. You bomb, you die. <laughs> yep. And we need, like, comedy clubs set up where, like, showcase nights, where if you get up there and if in five minutes you don't have one original premise, they just... They just take you out. <laughs> and the floor opens and you drop onto a pile of other hacks. And the next asshole comes. I hose it down. Next one comes up. Thank you so much, Greg, for coming That's on the it. show. Would That's you like it. to do any plugs? Uh, well, I obviously should plug Childish, which is a podcast I do about raising kids. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I do one called Fitz Dog Radio. And, uh, and then I do another one called Sunday Papers, which is me and my friend Mike Gibbons. Oh, nice. We go through the newspaper every week and do stories and do jokes about entertainment, sports, business, each section. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, check those out. And thank you so much for coming, Greg. Thank you for having me. This yeah. was really a lot of fun. Oh, that was so great. I really liked having Greg on. Great yeah. laugh. Oh, what, what a really... great laugh. And what a delightful man. Yeah. And I feel like I have less rage now, which yeah, is nice. It does. It I... feels that way, right? <laughs> I don't think that's his intention. <laughs> <laughs> we came full circle. We're now completely zen out. We'll never yell again. 
Uh, listen, if you are liking the show and you want to call in with your own Circle Time story, you can. You just call us at 424-570-KIDS. That's 424-570-KIDS. Or email us at ilovemykid at wondery.com. Uh, give us your story. or You can just vent. We don't care. Please. Uh, just don't forget to start it with I love my kid, but, and maybe we'll use it on the air. You can go over to the Wondery's channel on YouTube and watch every episode of I Love My Kid, but in beautiful 2D color. Wow. Uh, I've been Kurt Brownoller. I'm Megan Gailey. And I'm Chris Garcia. And remember, your kid is eventually going to resent you no matter what you do. So-